Okay, Mega Whale team, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we are diving deep into the macro and the short-term charts, discussing the possibility for an extended correction in October. Whether or not the buyers will step back in and push the price action back upwards, and exactly what is happening and the key levels you need to be paying attention to currently. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos of Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical, and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you are interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the first link down below. You will get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop with cryptocurrency, with Bitcoin, and the relevant economic news. And if you were interested in taking your trading to the next level, you can join us in VIP where we post trading setups with exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, exclusive analysis, and so, so much more. You'll also get access to our group chats, our general chat, our trading chart and education chat, our news, daily video, help and trade setup chat. Nearly 700 members, you can go ahead and contact us to join, joining via this link over here. Go ahead and contact me. You can contact me by clicking my name. This is a pinned comment in the free channel. All these links to find out more information. Check it out, guys. And let's jump on in. So as we can see, Bitcoin is very much still within this major short-term horizontal consolidation range. And this range has now been spanning since essentially the beginning of October. This is going to be our monthly open, and these are our monthly lows. You can see since then, we have more or less bounced between that 60,000 low to that 64,000 high point, creating what we would call a horizontal consolidation. Zooming slightly outward to the higher time frame on the daily chart, we are coming very close to retesting that major dotted trend line on the higher time frame, as well as a key level on the RSI. And if we were to break down, could spell disaster for the rest of October. So we're going to be taking a look into all of these charts today and really coming to a conclusion on the key levels, the key potential moves, and of course, most importantly, what implication these moves could have on the macro charts. So let's move over to the market data. The 24 hour volume is down 1% at 115 million and 24 hour liquidations are up 20% at 164 million with 140 million coming from long positions with 26 million coming from shorts. And of course that does come as Bitcoin loses that horizontal support level we had at 62,000 or 61,900. As per our recent post in Telegram, you can see right over here, we told you if we were to break below this horizontal support level at that 61.9k level, we would very likely see a range low retest. And we have since seen a continuation coming very close towards that range low. We are looking for a retest at 59. We'll discuss that in today's video. So a lot of liquidations in the past 24 hours. Moving over to the DXY, very, very strong. Again, amidst the fear of conflicts escalating, we see the dollar increase in price. And what a surprise and really what a coincidence well i wouldn't even call it a coincidence we all know this stuff is kind of planned or conflicts for economic uh, econ for economic purposes anyway the dxy has bounced back up that's another story the dxy has bounced back up above this one and a half year long trend line we are currently going to remove this trend line now focusing solely on our downtrend which is the downtrending resistance and of course this horizontal low our sell side liquidity and our current lows right over here a break below that 100 level, we are still confident we are going to see extended corrections on that yearly chart into 95, 94, 96. But until we sustain above that level, or should I say until we break down below that level, we do have the possibility for continuing higher, potentially even back to 105, depending on how aggressive the DXY depends, uh, determines to move. 
Overall, we are still in a higher time frame range. If we zoom out, this of course is going to be that higher time frame uh, horizontal range. This is going to be the range we have been in now since 2023, the beginning of 2023. So again, break the range, continue lower, break the range, continue higher. Until then, we are expecting bounces between range high and range low. Moving over to the S&P 500, fantastic stuff here for the S&P 500, really foreshadowing Bitcoin's price action. Yet again, cryptocurrency dropping and the S&P 500 rallying. Looking at those weekly candles, st steadily holding and actually increasing in strength as we pu push upwards over here with day and 22 hours remaining on this weekly close. Looking very strong, looking for a move up to 6,000. Currently, again, a weekly close below our prior highs at 5,670 will result in a strong correction back to our yearly low points. A loss of the yearly low is when we enter a macro downtrend. So if you're waiting for a macro downtrend, wait for the breakdown here. That is confirmation for continuations back down. Until then, we are expecting continuations higher. It is looking good. And that is it for the broader updates, guys. Let's go ahead and get stuck into Bitcoin. A quick word from today's video sponsor. If you want to go ahead and get 15% trading fee discounts for life, on your trading fees and you want to support me and support the video, support the channel, and even support yourself getting that 15% discount, sign up to BitGet, BitUnix, or BingX down below the links. Every single one of those will give you that trading fee discount. Every single one of those will help support the channel. You can find out more in the ad we're about to play and we'll jump back in. I'd like to introduce our partner, BitUnix. BitUnix is a global non-KYC, no country restriction exchange, making it a perfect exchange to trade on if you're from the USA, from Canada, the Netherlands, or just prefer to trade without KYC. This exchange is a futures and spot exchange with over 200 different trading pairs and some of the lowest fees in the game. If you sign up with my link down below, you'll get access to 15% off your trading fees as well as an exclusive reward center where you can claim up to a multitude in USDT prices. So go ahead and sign up with my link down below for 15% off and I'll see you in there. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get stuck back into it. So we're gonna keep today's analysis short and snappy because that's really what's happening. There's a whole lot happening and at the same time, there's a whole lot of nothing happening, right? If we take a look at the price action, Bitcoin has really been in a horizontal range, a very boring range, per, uh, do I say, since the start of October. It's been a range of a lot of volatility and a range of pretty much no volume and volatility at the same time. We've had periods of large movements, such as here, such as here. But we've also had periods of basically sideways, basically no volume, a crab market, momentum dying off in the price action, just pushing sideways. So it's been very boring and very interesting at the same time. But taking a look at this range, this range is of utmost importance. And the reason this range is so important is because a break above and below this range has significant macro implications in regards to where Bitcoin is likely to move to within the broader macro channel. So it's very important we actually analyze and we are prepared for the either breakup or breakdown of this channel. We know what that will impact and what impact that will have on these macro channels. So let's take a look, guys. This is our short-term range. Our monthly open is sitting at 64,000. We can see we held that resistance over here. We came up and retested it again, but we have since rejected. Our monthly low is sitting at 59,000, basically in that 60,000 region. In fact, this monthly low sits basically exactly where this level, this macro midline of the channel sits. So this is going to be our 200 moving average, which is on the daily chart, which coincides with that dotted trend line, which coincides with this horizontal support at, what is it? $59,846. A horizontal range is neither bearish nor it is bullish. It is completely contextual in regards to the direction of which it breaks and the subsequent context that direction, uh, that breakout occurs within. So let's take a look at this range. We can see right over here, guys, that our monthly open and our monthly low are going to be our trigger points for continuations. We know that if we break back above our monthly open, we are very likely to see a continuation into the range high. What are we looking for? We are looking for an hourly close. The reason is because we had an hourly rejection, we had an hourly rejection, and we had an hourly rejection. So our hourly close above should signify a change in character, and that change in character is likely to result in a continuation in the trend 
trend towards our upper resistance at 66,000. This is going to be the bullish target. Hence, we say very bullish above target 66,000. On the flip side, the bearish case scenario, we can see equally our daily, or should I say our hourly bounce, the monthly low, bearish target is 57,000 below that level. 57,000 being that prior horizontal low point, if we zoom out to a four hour chart, this will come up a little bit better. Right over here, 57,000. Now 57,000 also is a point of major significance because it is the second point in that monthly uptrend we had over here. So this is going to be our monthly September uptrend. We had point one, we had point two, we had point three. Three was the breakout. Two is going to be the likely retest. This is a major reversal point if retested. So again, the break below the horizontal range will result in a move back to 57. The break above the horizontal range will result in a move to 66. The reason these levels are so important is because if we are able to push up to 66 on the weekly or even the short term, the probabilities of sustaining a weekly candle close above 66 will facilitate a continuation to the range high as this prior high will have been cleared and we would have established a new lower high in the process. So again, a weekly close above the prior high, which is the, uh, the opening price of that prior red candle at $65,622 will be foreshadowed by a $66,000 close and will increase or significantly increase the probabilities for a directional continuation to retest the range high of the channel. Now, as we know, the momentum on the weekly chart is positive at the moment, and therefore a retest of the range high with positive momentum increases the likelihood of a directional continuation upwards. All of these retests, retests one, two, three, four, five, every single one of these, we had bearish momentum. We had negative momentum. Therefore, if we retest this time, we have positive weekly momentum. It will be the first instance of which the uh, downtrending resistance of the macro channel has been retested from a position of strength, increasingly likelihood of a continuation. And that is why this horizontal range over here is so important because if we are able to break upwards, the probability not only for a continuation of 66,000 increases, but that consequence could spill over to a potential breakout of this macro channel formation. Now let's talk about the bad side. Like we said, we could see a breakdown over here. And if we do see the breakdown, it is plausible that we see a retest of 57,000. That is not the only negative. If we do see the breakdown to 57,000, it is highly probable we are going to see a breakdown on the RSI on the daily as well. This is going to be our respective trend. We have got our low point here, our low point here, our low point here matching up. Okay, if we take a look, this RSI trend line breakdown will increase the probability for a correction back towards this trend line. Now, this is where it all lines up, guys. Look at where that trend line horizontally lines up. If we do a horizontal a horizontal box over here and we drop a vertical line exactly where we are. Let's just go put one candle ahead, one day ahead. That lines up with the 58 to 57,000 support level, which is exactly where we are targeting below 57 if we break down from this range. So we have got confluence there with that expectation and that target. Now let's come back to reality for a second and talk more about what is exactly happening. While we are in a range, there is no expectation in regards to breaks up or breaks down that is statistically greater than one another. It is more or less a neutral range. So while we are within the range, the most probable expectation is that we continue to bounce through the range until proven otherwise, until we get the break up or the breakdown. And therefore, as we are approaching this range low, as we are entering this 60,000 support level, we could very well see a swing back up to these high points. That is a very plausible and very possible move. And again, it is actually more likely than a direct breakdown or a direct break up because horizontal ranges are more likely to continue than end. So make that very much apparent in your mind, make yourself very much aware. What are we looking for for continuations? Again, we're just going to go ahead and draw that trend line down, watching that RSI, watching for that 
one hour RSI to flip, watching for this hourly long downtrend to end. So again, watching a break upwards over here for a continuation, possibly watching for deviation below our weak low. What does deviation mean? It means a breakdown, and then we're watching for our next candle to close back within, marking that as deviation from the range, potentially then leading to that continuation. If we get a strong flush upon the breakdown and we get a rejection upon that retest, that is going to be confirmation the price action is going to go lower. So watch for the initial retest and watch for the reaction on the second test, whether that is a rejection for continuation or whether or not that is an ability for the price to reclaim that level for a continuation upwards. And that is the short term price action, guys. That is basically all that is happening. Again, like we said, there's a lot happening, but also there's not much happening. It is very exciting at times, but at the moment it is actually quite boring and quite um, tedious to be trading these horizontal ranges. So don't overexpose yourself. Don't feel the need to, you know, trade every single possible move. There are clearer and better conditions. Like I was saying in my channel earlier today, we had a fantastic September full of old coin rallies, full of opportunity, full of a clear, very clear and obvious trend. That is not the case right now. Trading is very much contextual. You not only have to contextualize what is happening on the short term, but you have to be able to identify favorable and less favorable price consolidations to be trading. Because in less favorable instances, the chances are your win rate and your, your probability of success is going to be statistically lower than in favorable uh, scenarios or favorable conditions where you're more likely to succeed. So you do not want to be over trading in these least favorable conditions. You may as well just wait for the conditions to turn in your favor again to then execute again. The worst conditions are horizontal. The best conditions are trend based. So uptrends or downtrends, be it, it doesn't matter. You're shorting or longing. When you're in these horizontal chop range, your win rate is generally going to be slightly lower lower unless you're short-term time frame scalp trading and you're taking profits aggressively, which you should be doing in these kind of conditions. So moving over guys, let's take a short look at total. The total charts are not looking fantastic. In fact, the old coin total chart is looking so bad that we may as well just go ahead and delete it and forget about it for now until the total market cap breaks upwards. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm going to forget about it for now. We're watching individual old coins, but the overall total uh, three market cap pretty much going to be irrelevant for me at the moment. Too many fake outs, too many deviations, too unclear of a structure, pointless to be watching. Overall, we're watching the total now. So the total is the important one. Again, we're watching for a breakout of this trend line. Breaking this trend line, breaking this range will indicate to us that cryptocurrency as a whole is once again bullish. When we're under, we're in a downtrend, we're above, we are once again bullish and everything should follow suit. Altcoins, Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera, should follow suit once that flipping occurs. Moving over to Bitcoin yet again, we are watching very closely what is happening over here. We are watching that daily RSI. We are watching this midline. We are watching for those weekly levels. Again, like we said in yesterday's video, if you do not know, I recommend going back to watch that. Or if you don't want to, head over to the Telegram channel again. The link is down below. We posted a very quick summary about the weekly close and the upcoming weekly close. Exactly where Bitcoin will need to close to mark continuations, to mark neutrality and to mark continuations downwards. So read that post if you're interested about the higher time frame weekly. And of course, keep your eyes on this price action, which is highly likely. And by the time you're watching this video, it may already happen. It is highly likely we see a retest of these lows, whether that be just a week into it and continuation, whether that be a liquidity flush below and then reclamation or a liquidity flush and then rejection. We are highly, highly likely to see this liquidity actually grab. So it's highly likely we push down into these lows at least to 60,100. Okay, we're just shy. We went to about 60,200 before we see the price action to build up. Even if we see the price action build up slightly, such as this, it is likely we eventually come back down into that region. So keep your eyes on that region. Okay, keep your eyes on this trend line. And again, if you're looking for easy longs, watch for the break of 60,000. This is not the easy long region, okay? It's not the easy long region. This is a high risk long reason region. If you're looking for easy longs, we need to flip 66,000. If we flip 66,000, it is highly likely we see a nice strong move up to the trend line and that is going to be the next long position once that trend line breaks. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a fantastic day. Catch you in tomorrow's video to discuss the outcome 
of this channel and we'll see you then bye